have a couple of special people here. One of our judges, Sharon, up here, is a great writer of children's books. Judy Newman may or may not make it. She is the chief impact officer of Scholastic, and she's been a great supporter of our, uh, of our contest. And uh, also West Moss, who teaches at Montclair State, is having one of her plays read in Newark today, so she can't be here. But we do have Stella Berrettini from the drama department of Montclair State to help me read all these stories. And Stella's going to start, right? Absolutely. All right. Take it away. Sure. This, the, the, uh, the sound gets picked up in the back, so you don't, okay. don't pay Do any attention Zoe's story? to that. Do we have Zoe's story? Do we have Zoe's story? Fantastic. Alrighty. This is Memories by Zoe Cohen. When my parents first told me we were moving, the first thing I thought of was the park. Anderson Park has been in my life since I was three, when we moved into our house across the street, where my family took me to play when I was little, where I learned to ride a bike at the age of five where my friend and I had play dates and would run around and chase each other till we were tired, laughing the whole time, because that's what kids do. Where I walked with my grandma, holding her hand as we gossiped about the church ladies and compared our favorite teas. We would do three loops around before we realized, and I always wish she would live closer. Where I would sit down with a book, reading till the sun went down where I collected leaves with my sister, saying we would make a collage with them, but never did. Where I hid under a tree and cried, because a kid a grade higher than me had made fun of my frizzy, curly afro hair and called it a bushy tree. Have you ever heard of a comb? She had screamed in my face as she yanked my hair. Where my mom sat me down and called my hair beautiful, and that the world wasn't always accepting of this type of beauty. Lift your chin up, my love, for you are stronger than them and you will tell the world of you and many others beauty. Where, as time went on, I went with my older friends, walking to get ice cream from the shop around the corner and then chatting at the park, where I sat my parents down and explained to them that I was not like them, that the people I loved were different than the people they loved, where I waited with bated breath to see how this one response would change my life and where they told me they loved me no matter what, and that they didn't care who I dated. Where my theater group performed, laughing, yelling, and laughing, smiling the whole time. Our parents clapping, us wanting to freeze this moment forever, because everything was just right. But then it was over. Where my mom dragged me to walk every day during the pandemic. One day you will look back and envy our walks, she would say where I sat on a picnic blanket with my dad, eating Cuban pizza and talking about life, the sound of the train tracks in the background, a reminder of yet another journey, explaining that I wasn't sure what to do with my life. Z, if there is one thing I know, it's that you will do great things in your lifetime. Where my sister and I wrestled and laughed until we had grass stains on our pants and our hair on our face where I marched with my friends, family, neighbors, and strangers, the rage and sadness bursting to escape as I screamed, no justice, no peace, black lives matter, with a chorus of voices echoing mine, our feet marching to the rhythm of the beat like African drums and pounding dancers. Our bodies were swarming one another. It was time to show the world our beauty. Where on a hot June day, I laughed and yelled as me and my friends ran through the crowd of rainbow flags. People of all shapes and sizes, of all genders and sexuality and colors and races. Here, we were a huge family. As I weaved through the crowd with my pink, purple, and blue flag perched on my shoulders like a cape, the colors swarming around us as one. We were one. Where I went on my first date. Butterflies danced in my stomach the way my mom did when she heard her samba, happiness echoing inside me. When my parents said we were moving, I ran to my park, and I went through the memories. Zoe Cohen. The 
Zoe, I, I don't know whether you know that you were writing poetry there. Were you aware of that? It was, it's a poem until the very last line when it turned suddenly into a story, right? It was a beautiful thing. Uh, now, I don't know if you young writers will realize that the first day you get paid for your writing is a big day in your life. <laughs> and all, all of the winners here are going to get paid today. A hundred dollars. So, Zoe, come and, come and get it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, I don't know, having all these people here made me nervous. So nervous that I forgot Sharon's last name. <laughs> Sharon Dennis Wyeth, I know that. <laughs> she writes beautiful children's books and I should be ashamed of myself. Okay. The next, the next one is Roses. Rose Wiseman. It's called Hot Dog Adventure. <laughs> I blink my eyes open, the smell of kibble waking me, and I see Kate, my owner, <laughs> preparing breakfast. <laughs> I feel my tail start to wag, picking up speed. I love Kate. She always gives me food and takes me to the park. Kate is just the best. I get up stretching my short legs and putting my chest on the ground. Today is going to be a good day. I jump up and chase my tail around for a few minutes. Kate pats my head as I eat my delicious kibble. Oh boy, I love kibble. Kibble is just the best thing ever. Well, besides Kate, my owner, and <laughs> squirrels, and pie, and hot dogs. <sighs> I finish my food quickly and run to the door, grabbing my leash on the way. Kate laughs. It sounds like wind chimes and ripples on the pond. I bark softly to tell her, time to go, and she clips my leash on my collar. We walk into the clean morning air, and I drag Kate over to my tree. My rival, a puppy who could not take a hint, marked my tree again. <laughs> oh well, I think, as I mark my tree. Then we're off. I'm surprised every time we go outside because I am flooded with a thousand different smells all stampeding into my nose at once. I smell the neighbor's lawn, smelling of the chemicals that make it so green. Then I smell something heavenly. And I turn to look at the hot dog stand in wonder. Even though I'd just eaten, I was suddenly hungry. Most humans don't know about dogs' preference for hot dogs over almost anything. But Kate did. This fact did not stop her from pulling me away from the wonderful stand. I pull with all my strength, desperate, but it's too late. As the hot dog stand fades from view, I promise that I will come back. We will arrive at my favorite place, Anderson Park. We walk in on the thin winding path that leads to the main field. I drag Kate around, tail wagging and smelling all the smells. <laughs> I go everywhere but the tree with a large, evil-looking dog beneath it. Then, after finding the perfect spot, Kate spreads a blanket and sits down, looking around, then lying down. I rush over and lick her face. <laughs> she lets out a giggle and scrunches up her face. Satisfied that my job is done, I lie down next to her. Then the wind picks up, blowing from the direction we came. I smell the hot dogs, and almost like I am possessed, I bolt for the stand, following my nose. Kate jumps up, yelling after me, but I am too far gone. 
I'm about to exit the park before the large dog I saw earlier jumps at me. I run faster than I ever had, like a strong wind flying through the air. Then I run into something. I stop hearing nothing but the passing train before I look at what I hit. It was the mailbox on the... Uh, wait, what street am I on? I turn in a full circle, checking everywhere, but I can't seem to find anything familiar. I try my nose, but only smells are new ones. I walk around and then find that my mailbox, the only landmark to see where I was in this new land, was gone. I start panicking, running around, barking, asking for help. After what seemed like forever, rain started falling. I run under a, brush, a bush, seeking protection, and curl up. I dream of Kate and hot dogs. Then hands grab me, shaking the sleep off me and waking me up. I look up at this person, my captor, only to realize it's Kate. I let out a giddy yip, 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 and jump to lick her face as she hugs me to her chest and whispers, Never do that again. Then we walk to the hot dog stand. I give Kate my best puppy eyes, and she says, Fine with a sigh and a smirk. She buys a hot dog for two. <laughs>Hoping, I was hoping Stella wouldn't teach, choose that one so I could be a puppy dog for a while. <laughs> Come on, Rose. Congratulations. <laughs> so... The next one is Madeline's. Is her aunt here? That's okay. She's going to be late. Oh, okay. Something entirely different happens in Anderson Park. You can't imagine the things. We've had underground caverns with aliens, and we've had elephants, and explosions, and soldiers, and fairies and love stories, not always between humans and humans. True Love by Madeline Ahern. Love comes in a strange story package. It could be a narrative about a young couple determined to fight past anything that stands in their way. It could be a tragic, depressing spiel where the world seems against one, or it could be a story about a tree and a squirrel in Anderson Park. For in that park, special, peculiar things are always happening. They are in all places, but there is one particular friendship in that particular place that is special. The tree and the squirrel were inseparable. In the spring, summer, and in the fall, it seemed as though they were one. The squirrel would dart among the branches, nimbly scramble among the roots, and sleep among the flowers of the tree. And the tree would hold the squirrel tight while dancing among the wind. Neither of them felt they had anything to prove, anything they needed to give, anything that needed to be returned to them. They just had always known the other there and felt as one. In the darkest night, the harshest storm, the tree would shelter out any fear with its thick green leaves, and the squirrel would curl up in a hollow, warming the tree from the inside. Most days in their little haven in Anderson Park went according to schedule. The squirrel would wake up, lick the sweet dew from the tree's branches, and patrol around the park, bushy tail flying. The tree would watch the squirrel do so. Then, perhaps later in the day, young humans would come to scrape bark off the tree, and the squirrel would dance widely in front of them, acting rabid until the humans went away. Both the squirrel and the tree enjoyed it when this occurred. In the afternoon, 
a light drizzle might start to fall, and then the duo would watch as humans slowly trickled out of the park as the daylight started to fade. The rain would clear up, and the last brilliant rays of the sunset would shine through burdenless clouds. The squirrel would rest on the highest branch of the tree to see the sunset. But the best part of every night was the stars, shining high above like ever-twinkling diamonds, the vast numbers spreading out across the sky like a river, a sea, perhaps even an ocean. And so every night when the stars were out, the squirrel would whisper the songs of the stars to the tree, and the tree in turn would shelter the squirrel from the harsh winds of night. But as the days grew colder, change tinted the air. It wasn't a harsh, unforgiving change, nor a calm, peaceful change. But it became a fact among the creatures of Anderson Park that the blissful times of summer were ending and winter was coming. The squirrel spent most of its days now scrummaging for, for nuts and seeds under the vast blankets of crimson leaves coating the ground. It kept close to the tree, though, instinctively dashing up the rough, tr rup, the rough trunk at any sudden sights. But the tree didn't see this. From the eyes of the tree, everything was slowly drifting out of control. The squirrel spent less and less time accompanying the tree. Life in Anderson Park was speeding up out of the warm, relaxed plains of summer and into the frantic hills of autumn. And the tree was losing little bits of itself every day in the leaves it shed and in its sense of companionship. One thing that stayed the same as the nights grew colder was the constant shine of the stars and the warmth of the squirrel resting in the tree's branches. These nights were the happiest times of the tree's day. The tree had the squirrel all to itself, and it loved this. Every morning, the squirrel would wake up blanketed in soft golden leaves, a gift from the tree. But it seemed all too soon that the squirrel would scurry over another tree's roots, staying near another tree. The first night the squirrel didn't come back was also the first night of snow. Soft flurries danced through the air, drifting across the downy gray sky. The park looked softer, with sharp angles covered in smooth powders, any harshness coated with softness. But inside, the tree's heart was breaking. It could make out the furry shape of the squirrel resting upon the boughs of a nearby oak. Hmm. All throughout winter, the tree stayed a stately queen, dripping with icy jewels. Its bark hardened as all feelings of belongingness drained out of it. All the squirrel felt was a sense of security, of warmth, as it rested inside a soft hollow of the other oak. Finally, spring came, and for the first time in many, many days, the squirrel headed over to the tree, blinking the sleep from its eyes. But the tree had grown cold and refused the squirrel. This repeated many times until the squirrel had just about given up. In April, the tree's first flowers began to bloom. Bright pink, pale rose, deep orchid. Then, one fateful late spring morning, a soft breeze was drifting through Anderson Park. The scent of rain was carried on the wind, but with the mist and the rain came a gentle hope, a thing of warmth, a welcome thing of warmth after the long winter. The squirrel left the old oak, his golden brown eyes sparkling. The tree could see the little fuzzball of a squirrel bounding towards it, up and down, up and down, like a little fledgling learning how to fly. But the tree was full of envy and hate. As the squirrel scampered up the tree's branches, begging forgiveness, the tree could not forgive. Inside, its thoughts were, squir were swirling. I should take you in. But no, you betrayed me. Oh, how far have we gone from the carefree days of summer. It was your choice, all you are doing, none of mine. You mustn't come ever again. It was your choice, all yours, your betrayal. 
The squirrel was perched on a small twig of a tree, head bent, eyes sparkling, oblivious to the harshness inside the tree's mind. Unprepared as the tree let the branch the squirrel was balancing on break. Unable to comprehend as the squirrel dropped, falling through the air, the squirrel hit the ground with a small thud. Its small head lifted, looking at the tree one last time, and then it bounded away towards the street and road out of Anderson Park. The tree watched as the squirrel fled. It watched as the daylight faded and a brilliant orange-crimson magenta sunset swept across the horizon. It watched as the bright golden lights of fireflies flickered on and off, on and off. Finally, the tree watched as the endless twinkling stars came out and shone. And then the tree remembered. The tree remembered the stories the squirrel would share under the moonlight. It remembered the warmth that came from being with another. It remembered casting wishes upon the comet speeding through the sky. And most of all, the tree remembered the songs of the stars. The squirrel's songs of the stars. The tree waited the next day for the squirrel to return, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the next, and the next, and the next. Every night, the tree would whisper the songs out, calling for the squirrel, filling the night with a soft, lyrical tune. And the tree still stands, ever wishing, ever waiting, ever hoping for the squirrel to return. Isn't that sweet? Such a sweet story. Come up, Madeline. Thank you for that lovely story. <laughs> and last but not least, Arya Shah's story. All right, this is Arya Shah's Reflections of a Writer, Finding Inspiration and Growth at Anderson Park. Nestled in the heart of Montclair, New Jersey, Anderson Park enchants its visitors with its whimsical beauty. The entrance leads to a sprawling landscape of rolling hills, winding paths, and towering trees. The lush foliage sways in the gentle breeze, casting dappled light onto the park's verdant grass. As one wanders deeper into the park, the vibrant display of nature captivates the senses. The air is perfumed with the scent of blooming flowers, whose colorful petals dance in the sun's warm glow. The meticulously maintained gardens are a visual feast, bursting with hues of purple, yellow, pink, and red. The park is a haven for outdoor enthusiasts, offering ample opportunities for picnicking, jogging, or simply basking in the natural beauty. The winding paths lead visitors deeper into the heart of the park, where towering trees create a natural canopy overhead. The leaves rustle softly in the breeze, weaving a soothing symphony of sound. Anderson Park is a dreamy escape, a place where time slows down and the beauty of nature takes center stage. My journey as a writer has been a fulfilling and enlightening experience. It all started when I was just a young child, creating mini stories and poems for my own enjoyment. It wasn't until sixth grade that I fully realized the power of writing and how it can be used to create entire worlds and complex characters. From then on, I devoted myself to the craft of writing and have been consistently honing my skills ever since. As eighth grade approached, I knew that I wanted to enter the Anderson Park contest one last time, a local writing contest in my town. I had entered twice before in previous years, but this time I was determined to do things differently. Instead of focusing solely on winning, I decided to focus on the process itself. I wanted to write something that was true to myself, something that I could be proud of regardless of the outcome. Throughout this journey, I have had the pleasure of working with an incredibly inspiring teacher, Miss Grassi. Her feedback, guidance, and ideas have been instrumental in my growth as a writer. With her support, I've learned to experiment with different genres, play with style and tone, and develop my own unique voice. 
She has not only helped me to improve my technical writing skills, but has also nurtured my creativity and pushed me to think outside the box. Over time, I have developed new skills and techniques in my work that have shaped me into the writer I am today. I often look back at my old writing and realize how far I've come in only a few years. I used to write stories about best friends with superpowers and mythical creatures. I even wrote a book series about two sisters who explored the world together. Along with gaining a stronger grasp of grammar, a more nuanced understanding of character development, and a greater ability to write vivid descriptions, I've become more comfortable with my writing and its limitations. Writing gives me confidence, and it feels like an escape, even if I were to write a short poem. It helps me transcend into a new reality, a better one. For me, writing is an inspiration, a reason to develop my skills. It's as if I can't connect with my emotions until I write everything down. Being able to write such tales and experiences has shaped the way I see the world. I have developed empathy for others, become more self-aware, and I've finally found a creative outlet for my thoughts and feelings. As I reflect on my journey as a writer, I'm reminded of the profound impact that stories shared throughout, through written words and sentences can have on the world. Through my writing, I've come to appreciate the power of carefully chosen words, well-crafted sentences, and thoughtfully constructed narratives. It's through these tools that I've been able to amplify the messages I seek to convey to my readers and connect with them on a deeper level. However, with personal growth comes personal decay. On this journey, I've made many mistakes that I likely could have avoided had I been more experienced. Nonetheless, these errors have only encouraged me to pursue my passion and love for writing. Additionally, I want to speak about writer's block, a concept so simple yet so frustrating. The way I see it, it's a barrier between a writer and their work that takes hours, days, weeks, months, or even years of thought to overcome. As a writer, I've struggled with this on almost every single piece of mine. At some points, it feels almost impossible to create a story that qualifies as good, even though this is a dreadful part of the writing process. It's precisely how the mind comes up with impressive work. Anderson Park, to me, is a place where I can find inspiration to create and push through this challenge. As a writer, I've come to realize that rejection and feedback are an inevitable part of the creative process. It can be disheartening to pour one's heart and soul into a piece of writing, only to have it rejected or criticized. However, I've learned that these experiences are valuable opportunities for growth and learning. Through rejection, I've developed a thick skin and not take things personally. Instead, I focus on taking feedback as constructive criticism and using it to improve my writing. I've also come to accept that it's not possible for my writing to be perfect. Everyone has tastes and expectations, making it impossible to satisfy their needs without losing a part of my own identity as a writer. Instead, I strive to write authentically and true to myself, knowing that there will always be someone who resonates with my words and message. It's through this understanding that I've been able to find joy and fulfillment in the act of writing, regardless of external validation or acceptance. I find that being outdoors and in the face of nature surfaces thoughts that are sitting just under my consciousness. At a casual glance, the park seems so peaceful, yet when I pause and look deeper, there is a world of activity. A bird carrying a twig back to build its nest, an ant hauling food back for its family, a bee pollinating a flower, and two squirrels playing hide and seek around the base of the big tree. It is when I'm lost deepest in these observations that a story, idea, or a breakthrough comes to me. Moreover, I have discovered that writing is a process that never truly ends. Even when a piece is finished, there is always room for improvement and there are always new stories waiting to be written. As such, I approach each new project with a sense of excitement and curiosity, eager to see where the journey will take me. One of the most significant challenges I have faced as a writer is finding my own voice and style. It's easy to get caught up in imitating, others, uh, imitating other writers and trying to write in a way that I think will be popular or well-received. However, I have learned that the most compelling writing comes from authenticity and staying true to oneself. 
For me, this has meant developing a writing style that is unique and true to my experiences, thoughts, and feelings. I've discovered that this can be a vulnerable and sometimes uncomfortable process, but ultimately, it is the most rewarding. Another crucial part of my journey as a writer has been my love of reading. From classic literature to modern fiction, reading has broadened my horizons and expanded my writing abilities. Reading has allowed me to learn from other authors' styles and techniques and incorporate them into my own writing. I have found that reading different genres has helped me to explore new ideas and themes, which has been essential to my growth as a writer. When it comes to the revision process, I've learned that it's essential to take a step back from my work and approach it with fresh eyes. I often take a break from a piece for a few days or even weeks before coming back to it with a more critical eye. During revision, I pay attention to the flow of the piece, the character's development, and the overall message I want to convey. I also read my work out loud to hear how it sounds and catch any grammatical errors or awkward phrasing. Looking toward the future, I plan to continue developing my craft by experimenting with new genres and writing techniques. I also hope to attend writing conferences and workshops to learn from other writers and industry professionals. My goal as a writer is to continue creating stories that inspire and connect with readers, and I plan to dedicate myself fully to this pursuit. Anderson Park has become a special place for me, not just as a source of inspiration, but also as a symbol of my growth as a writer. Every time I enter the park, I'm reminded of the journey and the challenges I've overcome, as well as the joys and fulfillment that writing has brought me. It's a place where I can reflect on my progress and continue to push myself forward. Looking ahead, I'm excited to see where my writing journey takes me. There are still so many stories to be told, so many characters to be developed, and so many messages to be conveyed. I'm eager to continue exploring different genres and styles, experimenting with new techniques, and challenging myself to push beyond my limits. Writing has become an integral part of who I am, and I can't imagine my life without it. Whether I'm writing for myself or for others, I know that the act of putting words to paper will continue to bring me joy, fulfillment, and a sense of purpose. It's not that the process of writing has become any easier. Often, I still don't know what to write or how to write it, but I've learned to trust myself more. I know that ideas are there, waiting to be discovered. I just have to be patient and let them reveal themselves to me. Anderson Park holds a special place in my heart. It's where I first discovered the joy of writing and what sparked some of my best work. Every time I walk through the park's winding paths, I feel a sense of peace and inspiration. As I walk out of the park, feeling refreshed and inspired, I can't help but feel grateful for the opportunity to pursue my passion for writing. Writing has brought so much meaning and purpose to my life, and I know that I wouldn't be where I am today without it. As I continue on my journey as a writer, I'm excited to see where it will take me. I know that there will be challenges along the way, but I am confident in my ability to overcome them both as a writer and a person. I am grateful for the support and encouragement of my family and friends, as well as Miss Grassi, and more recently, Mrs. Chikaleski and Miss Norat, who have helped me find my voice and pursue my dreams. Over the past two years, I've written stories about time travel, danger, and romance. Each story has been unique, but they all share a common thread. Anderson Park. This one single location has sparked my imagination and inspired me in ways that I never thought possible. It's funny to think about how much of my life revolves around this small, charming park on the outskirts of town. It's not a place that holds many significant memories for me, yet it seems to be stuck in my head. Perhaps it's because of the stories I've written there, or perhaps it's just the magic of the place itself. I thought about all the possible stories I could write, a tale of aliens visiting Earth, a journey through the cosmos, or a discovery of a new planet. The possibilities are endless, but instead, I chose my story. The story of my writing. My growth. I know that this year will be different. I'm not the same writer I was two years ago. But that's the beauty of writing. It's always evolving. My, my day started at 5.30 in Vermont 
where it's quiet in the daytime, dark at night, and there is no traffic. And I feel like I've come to the big city here. It's like, <laughs> like the dog in the park. Uh, anyway, this, this year we had more entries than ever. We had 47 entries. And the way we judged it was we culled them, you know, one group and then another until we came to the winners. And uh, so we're going to do it again next year. And every year the stories are so inspiring and so wonderful. And to reward you, I invite you all to have a chocolate chip cookie <laughs> and uh, something to drink and get to know each other. Thank you for coming.